Uh, we are joined again by uh, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz uh, from the great state of Florida. Uh, Congresswoman, it's uh, great to have you on. Thank you for uh, being with us. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to be here. All right. Um, Congresswoman, I uh, did not love uh, Barack Obama's speech. You know, <laughs> I, I like to keep it real with you. Uh, <laughs> I thought he reached out to the Republicans too much, uh, not because I'm against reaching out uh, generically, but because I think that it won't get the job done. They're still going to get zero votes. So I wonder what the point is. He knows he's going to get zero votes, so why does he bother doing it? Well, I think he bothers doing it, Cenk, because he gets points for they, – they, the White House believes he, that they get points for trying. Um, if If it's – all partisan, all the time, and the White House comes out with both both guns blazing. Um, then I think they perceive that the independent swing voters uh, and and the moderate uh, the Republicans who he has an opportunity to pick up and that we need in swing districts for the midterms. That uh, if if we're perceived as being you know purely and simply partisan, that uh, that that we lose those voters, or at least that their support is is eroded. But I totally agree with you, uh, in the sense that I haven't seen any indication on the part of of the Republicans that I work with in the House of them being at all interested in compromise. Uh, in fact, I think that uh, in a sense they're rooting against America uh, and against American success um, because the the way they perceive it, if we win, they lose. I understand the optics of it, but, you know, I think it has two uh, significant downsides, and I'm not sure the administration is taking that any, into account. First of all, um, they never they never make their own case. The Republicans make the case that, no, they don't. You're right. you know, that tax cuts are always the right thing, spending <laughs> freezes are always the right thing, et cetera. I mean, I can go down the list. And in, their instead version of, of compromise? Right. And instead of making his case as to why... Sometimes spending makes sense, and it's why sometimes tax increases make sense. Uh, Obama comes out and largely, I mean, uh, surrender sounds really harsh, but yeah, don't uh, don't go that far. All okay, right. all right. So, <laughs> so, but he, but there's tremendous downside to never ever making your case. Is that a concern in, for the progressives in the House? You mean that we are not making our case? No, no, that the president that the is not making Oh, that the president not. I think the president makes makes the case, and I think he made it last night. I think he made it strongly. Um, I don't think the Republicans ever make their case. I mean, it's it's hard to. <laughs> I mean, what I what I find frustrating about the the ex, the, the expression of bipartisanship or the, the outreach on their part is that uh, not only is there never a reach back. But you know what are we reaching back to? They they don't have they're they're bankrupt of ideas. They their version of compromise is do it their way, uh, and and if we're not doing it their way, then then we're not coming to the table and working with them. I mean, it, my version of compromise is we hear your ideas, we sit down with you and discuss them, we try to come to some kind of see if we can find common ground, and on some things we will, and some things we won't. And I'm you know I'm totally comfortable with that, and I think that that's. A good way to run a democracy, but the Repu you know, we're never going to win over the Republican leadership or the you know the, the Republican members if uh, if we continue to just talk about bipartisanship and allow them to get away with simply insisting on it being their way. Well, you see, that's the thing. We're talking to Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz from Florida. You see. That hope seems so ridiculous that you, you're, that the Republicans are going to act in good faith that I don't believe that it really exists. Uh, so there must be something else afoot. And uh, I tend to think that uh, what I said at the end of the last segment is that, look, I don't think that they want to reach a compromise with the Republicans uh, at a real centrist position between conservative and liberal. I think they want to pretend to reach a compromise, and that compromise is just going to be a corporatist compromise. Where a what compromise? A corporatist compromise. A corporatist compromise. Okay. Where the pharmaceutical companies are protected from competition, where there is no drug reimportation, where uh, we will not negotiate prices with them, and the list goes on and on. I think mm. that's the real 
uh, deal that's being played against the American people. I, I, you know what? I just I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I, I'm just not that cynical. I I really believe that the president. Uh, first of all, I believe in the in the agenda that the president laid out last night. I thought he did a very good job. I thought the speech substantively was excellent. And you know, speaking as a liberal Democrat and someone who you know shares, I think the progressive values that you have. Um, I, I mean, I think reaching out to small business owners and making sure that they can have enough capital to generate jobs and be able to, you know, grow their businesses, there's nothing moderate about that. I mean, that's that's something we absolutely need to do in order to pull this economy out of the ditch. And uh, I mean, What part of big pharma is small business? Well, the president didn't talk about big pharma. I mean, that, 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 but that had nothing to do with But he did make deals with them in health care reform. He, he made huge deals with them in health care reform where they uh, Jenkins, stood to make of hundreds of billions of dollars from those do, deals. Do you see anything in law at this point that has anything to do with a deal with Big Pharma? I don't. So you guys are going to stop it in the House? Well, I think we're going to come up with legislation that is going to make sure that we do have negotiations with uh, w with the pharmaceutical industry and that we do close the, the, close the donut hole uh, and, and cut prescription drug prices for senior citizens by 50% when they're with, in the With donut all hole. due respect, I don't believe that at all. And not because I think you're not telling you me the truth. You don't have to believe it. I, I, look, okay. the, I, the words, I just don't think it's going to happen. I mean, words are cheap. So, I mean, it, it's, just, it's just a matter of following what the Congress does. So let me ask you we'll how. You. How are you going to get that good deal? Because if you got that deal, I'd give you all the credit in the world. Okay? But, how? Yeah. Now, you have a Senate version, which I think is, is I mean, an absolute gift to corporate America. They, they love every piece of that legislation. Now, you guys say you're not going to pass that in the House, right? Or if you do, you need a, a second rec bill that goes through reconciliation. I think, we'll pass this, I, I think we'll pass the reconciliation bill you know, with a majority of the House uh, and the majority of the Senate before we agree to vote on the Senate bill. I mean, so if, if, we, if it goes down like that, what I think will happen is we will hold the Senate bill at the desk in the House, have passed the, the, the reconciliation bill with a majority of the House, send it to the Senate, wait for them to pass it, and then and, and only then would we pass the Senate bill. All right, now we're making news. <laughs> so uh, I mean, that's how I think. If if it unfolds the way it should, that's how I think it will happen. So what are the chances of that? Because the Senate, of course, says, "Oh no, no, trust us. You pass our version There's first. No Let me tell you something, Jenk. There's no way that we are going to trust them. No way. I mean, that bill, the Senate bill, is. Dead D O A as a standalone bill. We are not passing that in the House. The Speaker has said that. We are not passing the Senate bill without making sure that the Senate passes that reconciliation bill. All right, that is very clear. I mean, I really don't think we. You know, I, I haven't heard anyone say anything to the contrary. We've had we had three caucus meetings in the last four caucus meetings in the last two weeks with the Speaker up at the front. She spoke publicly about the Senate bill. Not being, you know, not being passable in the House last week. She talked this week about making, even though constitutionally uh, the, the parliamentarians are telling us that we ha look, we would like to in the House. Our caucus would like to make the Senate go first on, on reconciliation, but we can't because the parliamentarians are telling us because it's a revenue, because it's a revenue bill, the Constitution requires us to to pass it first. So, okay, if we have to pass it first, fine, but we should wait on them the Senate to pass it after we do, and then, send the, and then send the Senate bill to the President. That makes a lot of sense. So let's fill in the details real quick. Sure. Uh, what would have to be in that Senate reconciliation bill uh, for the House to be satisfied with it? Well, uh, there's a number, a number of the, the, the limitations on the reconciliation bill. Um, and, and, you know, one of the important things to understand, because reconciliation doesn't mean anything to anybody, basically reconciliation is a method that we use to pass changes to law with a majority of the House and the Senate. And it's important to understand because the Republicans are, you know, screaming and yelling about how we're going outside procedure and this is abnormal. They passed every major piece of legislation with reconciliation, including the Bush tax cuts, uh, including, the, including some of the, their, their budgets. So this is a normal standard operating procedure in, in the Congress. The Founding Fathers created this country with majority rule. And you shouldn't, we, were, we should not allow the Senate to make it normal that you have to pass everything with 60, with, with 60 votes for the supermajority. But it, to answer your, your question specifically, those, the, the limitations on a reconciliation bill are that the only provisions that we're allowed to include in those are, are, have to be related to revenue. I mean, it has to be, it has to be funding related. Right. 
So we're going to be able to take a look at some of the funding issues, particularly the financing mechanism, and make adjustments to the financing mechanism, which you know most of us don't like, in the Senate bill and uh, and a variety of other you know, funding related items. But okay. I couldn't. I, I don't know what's going to be in the bill in the reconciliation bill at this point because they're just starting to work on it now. So what I'm hearing from you is uh, you want to get away from the excise tax and uh, pay yes. for it through the House version, which was taxing the well, top 1%. Well, you know, I, I don't know whether whether we're going to – I don't think we're going to do it that way. I think because the White House and uh, a number of the interest groups, including labor, were uh, you know, sat down at the table and worked out a compromise, I think there's going to be – that there is a compromise – I know there is a compromise version of the excise tax that's in the Senate bill that has been worked out with a number of different groups, including labor. Okay, and of course, the other major question everybody's got on their mind is, uh, will it also have a public option? Uh, it's unlikely that we can put, do a public option in a reconciliation bill because it's not funding related. Well, I, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't understand that at all. I thought the public option was completely funding related. No, because it's the the the. the it, I mean, it's not a funding. I mean, mechanically, it's not. A funding issue. The public option is 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 the way you would structure. I mean, I'm trying to find a, you know, the best way to explain it. But the, no, no, uh, no, I understand. It's you know, it's not a funding mechanism. But it but, certainly affects the deficit. It certainly affects the budget. And I thought that was a necessary requirement for being included in a reconciliation. Well, I, I mean. I would like nothing more for the for the public option to to meet that test, and I'm sure that if it if it can, we would we would run it through. But the the public option doesn't have the, we don't have the votes for the public option in the Senate. So yeah, I see. Th there we go again. Now you see. No, I mean, I mean that's that's, that's what leads to my cynicism because I we were told all along that we had plenty of senators. We had 51 senators for a public option easily, but that we couldn't do it because we needed 60 senators. I mean, there's been a million excuses not to have the public option in there, even though every single poll is between 60 and 80 percent of the American I people agree. want it. I totally support the public option, and I think it should be included, and I, I want to see it happen. I just can't assure you, uh, number one, that procedurally it can be a part of, of, of a bill. and It's I'm, not going to be. It's okay. I, I mean, I'm, in, I'm hearing what I'm hearing. It's, you, can, so, you can, don't, inter don't, just don't interpret what you, what you think I'm saying. I, I'm saying something very clearly. One, I think, it's a, I think including the public option is a procedural problem. I don't know for sure, but we'll, the parliamentary, we'll work with the parliamentarian to see. And number two, I don't think we have agreement with the Senate on including a public option. They hate as part it. Of they the don't want it. Problem. They're liars. They, they don't want it. They say they want it. They don't want it. They'll take I every agree. They excuse. don't want it. I totally agree. <laughs> I don't think they're liars. I think they've said they don't want it. No, they said before. Oh, we want it. We want it, but the Republicans won't let us. Oh, we some need of the senators votes. say they oh, want this, it, and some this, of them, that. but but some of them don't. They don't I, want it because they, and that's why I call but them. But you know who said they want it? The House wants it. The House wants it. We voted for it. We support it. But we've got a two. We've got a two chamber a bicameral Congress here. Uh, you know we're. We're subject to the negotiations and compromises that we're able to pass through both both chambers. And That's just in the, the end, constitutional reality that we face. I know. And the constitutional reality we face is that in the end, there will be no public option, there will be no Medicare buy-in, and what you'll have is pharmaceutical companies that make a tremendous killing off this. You'll have a new mandate that pushes 30 million more people into private insurance companies. They'll make a killing off this. Everybody but the American people will make a killing but off this. But you know what? I don't care if people make money, if we cover more people. And if we if we can cover everyone, if we can provide the security and stability that people need to have in health insurance. I mean, last week, Jenk, I was online uh, on the TSA security line to go back to Washington with a small business owner in my district who just struck up a conversation with me, like people like small business owners do all over my district. He he provides insurance to his employees. And his insurance premiums went up 172 percent last year well, that's because he had one sick employee. But Congresswoman, that's the problem. Look, You're right. I'm and not against profits. I'm a capitalist. Solve. I'm a capitalist. I, I'm not against profits, and I'm not saying we should do anything punitive. All uh, the problem with these companies winning is that we lose. No, they keep raising our is, premiums. I they want keep to understand how it. you think we lose by covering 35 million more Americans with health insurance. Because our premiums sure keep going down. up. It's the story you just told. Our premiums go up and no, up and up, and, and we'll there's be able no to check bring them on down it. when this bill passes. 
I don't, uh, how? There's no public option. There's no check. How are you going to bring the cost down? Because you're broadening the pool. You're uh, prohibiting them from dropping people for a pre-existing condition. You're requiring the insurance to be guarantee issue. You're setting the premiums. Look, just look what we're doing for women. Women pay on average a 48% higher premium, Jank, uh, right now simply because of our gender. We're going to prohibit that, prohibit that and only allow you know, very basic things to, 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 for the premiums to be based on. That's going to bring down costs all by itself. I don't want the audience to get misled into thinking that I don't think there's good things in the bill. There are. And <laughs> you do expand coverage. Thank you. There's no question Hallelujah. about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. You expand coverage. With the things that you mentioned are absolutely true. Okay. But I'm going to guarantee you right here that our premiums are going to skyrocket. You are wrong. And the, and the I will things that you I'm mentioned happy. are not cost containment. Okay, they expand I will bet you that that's not true. And I will come back on your show so that we can have another, another conversation about it so you can congratulate me that I was right. Okay, two years from now, if my premium goes <laughs> down, I'll uh, pay for your insurance. That sounds if good. If my premium Perfect. goes up, you pay for my insurance. But uh, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> i got to run, though. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, thank you so much Take care, for joining Thanks us. For we appreciate me. the conversation.